Boss of the Round Table. Welcome to episode 9 of season 1, the second part of our three-part finale. I still don't understand why we have three-part season finale. <laughs> because I'll it's juicy. Be. It's like, oh gosh, like coming to a close in season 1. Like, ew, 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 you know? Like. Yesterday, or wow, well, yesterday, last episode was the green light. Today's the yellow light. Mm-hmm. And next so, week is going to be the... Why expo- do we the days? We don't do this every day. We don't. Well, we, yeah, yeah. You know, it's whatever next behind the scenes, the but the yeah, the f- next episode is gonna be the big red light. It's gonna be an hour long special. Story. Yeah, <laughs> we have the best segments cooked up. Like I'm so excited. It's gonna be a party. Basically the same stuff except better. Stuff. We're probably gonna even pregame the next step before the finale. I get imagine. really get really liquored up. For the that third one. part of the finale, the true finale, the season remix, the ultimate hour long episode. <laughs> We'll go platinum with the hundred some radio stations fuzzy wall on the corner. <laughs> platinum with you know with streams and sales. <laughs> so um you know this week we're gonna start we're just gonna kick right into it with a segment called Back to the Middle Ages where we examine some of our um, old social media posts. So uh, Paul, let's start with you. There's this uh, picture from 2012. It's of a beardless Paul, which surprisingly more recent than you think. I used to have mutton chops, like they go. Oh. Big old mutt chops. And I used to be on the radio's chops, and that's what I would go as. Jeez. I think what's funny about this post, so this was your first Instagram post back in 2012. <laughs> Dang, uh, you one. used the very popular filter back then. It's that filter where, like, it borders it and, like, gives it, like, a sun glow. I don't know if it's – I don't think it's Nashua. Isn't that still around? I don't know. I feel like it is. I feel like Anyways. most people don't even use filters. But anyway, anyway. So uh, tell us about this photo, Paul, because you, you look very young here. Well, I mean, that right there is a picture of me and my ex-girlfriend. Really? Yeah. And funny story about that. Her name was Sam. Mm-hmm. And so I went home one day, and I was like, hey, I told my parents to yeah. home. I was like, hey, I'm dating Sam. And they thought I was coming out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> How did that even go down? Like, like when they, they're like, what? I'm like, no, Sam is a woman. But they were Sam still like, it's okay. They weren't. They didn't care. It's not like they're like, oh, they're gonna banish me. But yeah. they're like, really? Like they were really like probably <laughs> shocked at first. Like I thought they were like more shocked. You're like, first. yeah, like, like yeah. Dancing. And then like it took me really. So like, oh, you think Sam's a god? <laughs> no. But yeah. So it's funny because I literally have like five pictures on my Instagram. That being one. Yeah. And so my wife now, mm-hmm. who is not Sam, <laughs> like, Fun it was facts. like it was like I was like looking at. It. She goes, "This is in your old Instagram." I was like, "Yeah, it's one of the things I have up." She goes, "What is this?" Like. That's one of my exes, exes, and she like thought it was like the funniest thing. Well, at first, I thought you and Katie had been when I saw it was twenty twelve. I was like, oh, that has to be Katie. Who else would Paul have been seen in twenty twelve? But it's like this girl does not look like Katie. So I was like, wow, no. Katie went through a glow up. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't know if she ate some salad or what she did, but like Katie is looking Katie's- bomb as. Book. <laughs> Katie's probably listening to this on the way to work, like shaking her head, like, what idiots? <laughs> I get, I get to this out. I'm looking back on Facebook on this day, and I go way back. And this was done in 2009. This Facebook post I made yeah. in 2009. Let's hear it. Paul is working till nine. Like, who cares? Wow. Like, who cares? That's the, the epitome and of And you remember, like, like, I'm looking back, and you remember the, when notes were big back in the day, like, quiz it, like, Okay. Remember these? You would do these and like you'd answer these questions. So oh yourself, my gosh, yes. People people were. thought like it really mattered, yes. Also, uh, eight years ago, I was at a Lake Erie Monsters game. And someone I also said on May 17th, 2010. Yeah. Pretty much sick of rain during the summer. I was dumb as hell when I was a middle schooler. Honestly, like a young younger person. I was stupid. But who wasn't like, stupid? I think everyone was stupid. Back also, then. I said, who wants to go on a road trip with me to Kings Island? Kings Island <laughs> is four hours away from here. That's there was not... no comments, no likes. <laughs> there was one like and three comments, and one of them was mine. <laughs> and I like so the So my too. idea of a road trip, uh, when I was, uh, in 2010, I was, t- oh my god, I was 20 at that time. Oh, wow. My idea of a road trip at age, well, 19, was a four-hour drive. Mm. Hey, what's she gonna do with that big fat butt? You know, 
Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. This is another photo I found. This is a 2007, also, I think. Hold on. Okay, I'm go sorry. For it. I gotta go for it. No, go for it. I just found this picture of me. This is like right when I had started to get long hair. Look at that. <gasps> that looks like it was taken in the 90s. <laughs> I just started to grow my hair out. Wow. You look so baby faced there. I know. I do, don't I? I probably would have looked all right with longer hair. I should have tried to. I, you know what? You should have while you could have, but. My hair was too bushy. That is so funny, though. Wow. All right. I'm done. I'm done looking at that now. <laughs> well, I'm not done with this photo. So this is from 2007. Now, Paul, you are standing in the middle of a fire pit, and there's some stones around the fire pit. You're, like, in the middle of the fire pit. Oh, wow. There's another photo. Wow. You know, you look like the Beatles, like, fifth guy who, like, didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> so and good. so you're sitting in the middle of the fire pit. Your arms are, like, it's like Lion King, like, like, hi, Anya. Uh -huh. like, you're, like. They're spreading wide, and it looks like you're screaming. I think I see some visors in the distance. Mm -hmm. um, and your hair's about medium length. And you said that there was another story behind this photo. That was actually taken at the Cleveland Zoo. Where the hell is the, in that the zoo? That is at the Cleveland Zoo. And I don't even I don't recognize remember, that at the zoo. I don't remember exactly where in the zoo. I just know that's at the Cleveland Zoo. And if you notice on my left Let me knee, expand this photo. If you see on my left knee. Oh, there's a bandage. I have a bandage on my left knee. And that's when I really effed up and damaged my, I like broke my kneecap. Jesus, and, and how'd left. you do that? I, I hit it with a brake drum from a car. Oh, God. I was carrying, I was just carrying it. It smashed into my left knee. Anyways, I broke my knee. Wow. And was like, long story short, I was like, well, being able to walk on it like after a while. And then yeah. they had to do surgery. So I was walking, and then I had to like go back on like off crutches, on crutches yeah. or whatever. So that was like the first time I ever like really went out doing something not on my crutches. Yeah. And I was celebrating in a fire pit for some reason. I don't know why. But I was celebrating only having a knee brace. You know, it was kind of like a, a phoenix well. rising from the ashes. And I wonder if there's part of it. I don't remember exactly why I picked the fire pit. Yeah. I don't. But I remember that's why that picture was taken. I don't know remember exactly why that location. You look very taken. happy. I, I could tell that zoo. I could tell that your nipples that, are hard in this photo. That was, <laughs> that was that was also the time I went with. I mean, I look a little bit older, old enough, and I think it was eighteen mm -hmm. or so in that in that. And I was at the zoo with one of my friends yeah. named Rachel, and she happened to be babysitting a kid. Okay. And so we we had this kid. Everybody thought this kid was ours, and I freaking knew it. Oh my! And I was like, my and I God. wanted to tell her. I wanted to just walk. Around, like we're babysitting. We're babysitting. 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 With everyone, I guarantee you, everyone's just like, "That's a kid. They, that's their oh. kid." Like, no, and they, but they probably like some like, old lady up to you and was like, "They're probably judging us because we were young. like 18. And they're like, "How old was the kid?" Stupid. You know, was it? Uh, How old was the kid? The kid was about maybe. Five? Oh my god, they probably were. Four, four maybe? Hey, people thought it was your kid. They were like, oh my gosh, you got pregnant at 14. Yeah. 16 Jeez. and pregnant over there, but no, that was not me. <laughs> oh my god. I still do not have any kids, and I am now 27 years old. Hey, I, I don't even have a cactus yet, so. Yeah, I got one over there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You literally put it in the most forgettable place in the whole well, room. Because my cats eat them. Really? My cats are stupid and will try to eat the cactus. My one cat literally had a candle. Just a yeah. candle. It's open what if you put like a mesh... Over the cactus. Oh, yeah, that looks real nice. Having chicken wire on the <laughs> <laughs> It'll look so edgy. Yeah. <laughs> it's be your birthday present. Like, like, every time comes someone comes over, it's like, what is this? Be like, shut up, it's postmodern. <laughs> it's postmodern. It's, po it's, post it's Paul postmodern. Um, no, that's going to be my, my present for you for your next birthday. It's going to be like a cactus with like decorative mesh that like... It looks like an art piece, but your catch is like the rose good. from like Beauty and the Beast. Like, like, the <laughs> Actually, they do that. You can literally <laughs> like a terrarium. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here's this photo I got of me. I think this is like 2010, and I'm sitting at the beach. I put an aqua filter, aka just a blue. It's a like blue literally blue. it's blue, and I I can't tell if I'm like trying to look sexy or trying to like like I'm having fun here. It's one of those poses when you're younger and you think, man, this is going to look awesome. Like, this is probably the equivalent it. to, like, you know how, like, today's teens would probably be at the beach and taking, like, moody shots and, like, caption with, like, you know, swimming pool, indigo, deep blue. Like, because this would be, like, that version, but, like, in 2000. Was that your MySpace profile picture for a while? I never had a MySpace. 
Really? I only had Facebook. You kind of look like a young Jack Antonoff in there. <laughs> you love calling me Jack Antonoff. You and do. I low I mean, key you do. love. I low key love. It's the, the hair, alphabet. but also the, just the like the general demeanor, like yeah. the way you carry yourself. And this photo, I remember this. So I was part of a youth advisory council when I was young, and we would have a yearly cookout at the uh, this pavilion in like a. Oh gosh, I forget the area, but like a Cuyahoga Is Valley. Is that a can of paint next to you though? Oh, those beans. Okay. So that was like the cookout. So I was cooking. And they caught me in the camera. And what's funny about this picture to describe it is my right hand is like in a very like limpy looking thumbs up. And you know, my hair is wild out of control. I'm wearing really bad glasses. You could tell like my eyes. Like I was like, didn't know what I was doing. So I kind of, my eyes are closed. And like, it's not like a smile. It's almost like a, like a, okay. Like, you know, like a, like a, like, like you're trying to be enthusiastic, but you can't be. And then I'm holding aluminum foil, which looks now. This is the first time I've ever seen that. Like, notice this. It looks like I'm holding it like a dick. <laughs> kind of. Like I'm literally holding this aluminum foil bin right in front can, of. That can crotch. I say one thing about this? Absolutely. I love the Aeropostale shirt and the Aeropostale booty shorts. <laughs> no, that's a sweatshirt that I had tied around my waist. <laughs> <laughs> I just had like straight up green booty shorts. <laughs> I'm like, why? Well, what's so pretentious is that I'm wearing the Aeropostale shirt and the Aeropostale sweatshirt. Like, what kind of Aeropostale nasty-ass model am I? I've never worn Aeropostale. It, Aeropostale has never touched my white skin. Dude, honestly. it touched me a lot in high school. Okay, Paul, so for this next segment, it's time to do some retroactive astrology. When we go back to last week's astrology and we see, was it accurate? Was it not accurate? And this is going to be great because... Our lives changed a lot. Last we had, we have had. I'm not even trying to be like those people, but we had some crazy. I left weeks. a job. Mm-hmm. I am in the process of maybe getting a new job. Not sure. We'll have to see. So uh, a lot changed. There was a lot of arguments, not between us. But oh a lot no, no, of no, arguments yeah. last week. A lot of deep, deep seated arguments too. Yeah. Oh my goodness. For some reason, I deleted both of our predictions. Let me pull those back up. I apologize. Okay. Okay, so Paul is a Scorpio, which is kind of funny. I would never have assumed you were a Scorpio. But Why? Because Scorpios know, don't are like... Don't answer that. Well, Scorpios are very, like, aggressive, depressive, like... Aggressive, monsters. depressive? It's my next album, Aggressive, Depressive. Uh, uh, sh- 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 uh, uh. Anyway, so last week, so this last week, Paul, it's a solid week, Scorpio. As mentioned a last week... week? Yeah, it's a solid week. As mentioned last week, you need more sleep, and this still stands. Go to bed. Never, nevertheless, fair Venus is in one of your money houses, improves your chances to benefit from wealth and resources of others. You can attract money to you through your partner or your spouse or a bank. Venus also sweetens your intimate relationships. Be still my beating heart. Romance is sweet and cozy. Meanwhile, fiery Mars is in your house of communications, revving your engines and increasing the tempo of everyday life. You are forceful in all your conversations with others. That... I agree with. Yeah, that one works. That one fits. Don't try to coerce someone to agree with. I agree with. Lighten up. It's all good. Huh. That's surprisingly pretty accurate. That the last half, part. The first half didn't really mean much yeah, to me. No, I and agree. The second half was actually surprisingly accurate. Uh, you have been very forceful this week. You've I have. Like, you've I been like, this is what's happening. Like, it didn't always turn out for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I think it was pretty accurate for you. Now, mine says... Libra, your focus on red tape issues like inheritance, inheritances, shared property, and things that you own jointly with others plus insurance and taxes. Okay, no. Not at all. <laughs> Mercury is opposite your sign now, which means you've been keen to talk to partners and close friends. Oh, true. Very true. Nevertheless, this opposition can trigger conflict. You don't like conflict, although ironically, you are verbally eloquent and a great debater. Go figure. Increased activity and chaos on this home front may be distressing. The ticket is to travel somewhere because this is really what you want to do. Oh my god, I went to Toronto last week. This one's, last time we did this, it wasn't accurate at all. This one's actually pretty good. It says you need to travel somewhere because that's really what you want to do, and I traveled somewhere last week. That's actually kind of accurate this time. That's I'm actually, weird. I'm pretty impressed. I'm actually pretty impressed. The first time we did this, it was like not. It was a bomb. <laughs> but this one's actually pretty close. Is it the same source? Yeah, same I'm name? using uh, Georgian Nichols. Georgia Nichols. Oh yeah, really trust them. <laughs> she, she looks really fun. Do you want to hear this week and kind of prepare ourselves? So sure. This is the week of the thirteenth. Um. 
for some reason, mine's still about wealth. It says, uh, I have a strong focus on matters related to other people's wealth. Discussions about these matters are likely this week. You might encounter a power struggle with someone on Wednesday about how to divide or share something. That's oh. specific. That's weird. On Wednesday? Well, there was, I mean, there wasn't power struggles Read yesterday. that sentence again, though, about what, about what? You might encounter a power struggle with someone on Wednesday about how to divide or share something. I wouldn't say it was about how to divide or share something. It was that, kind of more about, like, that a might actually element. That might actually be true for me. The, no, that's just me. It, oh, that's it's you. Libra. Okay. Yeah. Um, looking down the road, do your best. That would have been so true for you, though. Um, looking down the road, do your best to solidify your financial situation because Uranus might shake the pile a little when it comes to relying on your partner's income or the income of others in the next few years. This is the perfect year for you to save some money, so do it. Ka-ching. Skip a few restaurants. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for you, Paul, this week. There's a lot of action happening in your chart, and it's all happening directly opposite Scorpio. That means the sun, the new moon, Mercury, and the new arrival of Uranus all take place opposite your sign. What does this mean? Your primary focus is now on partnerships and close friendships, and this is where you'll get some surprises. Oh, my God. Tuesday is the perfect day to ask yourself what you want from your closest relationships. Wednesday, be patient to avoid ego battles with someone. In the bigger picture, you will change your point of view about partnerships. You want a partnership that gives you freedom and allows you to grow and learn. And I'm reading that last part, like when it's a partnership about like oh, your career. I know. So right, read that last part again. Tuesday's the perfect day to ask yourself what you want from your closest relationships. Which is funny, especially that day. Yeah. Wednesday, be patient to avoid ego battles with someone. Yeah. In a bigger picture, you will change your point of view about partnerships. You want a partnership that gives you freedom and allows you to grow and learn. That's amazing. Kind of accurate. Isn't that amazing? That's it's actually because I already I already kind of know what's going to happen next week, and that's surprisingly well. Actually, it's about a week off. It's about this week. Like, the week we're in. The week we're in. Oh, I see. I see. That's wow. why Tuesday and Wednesday. Because I was like, like that actually be accurate for the following week too. But that's yeah. isn't that? I was wow. reading that in that's my even eyes. Weirder. See my eyes. My eyes were like <gasps> like they I mean, like basically what we can say, so I left a job Wednesday. Yeah. So that's and like, like there was issues on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's crazy. Literally Wednesday was the ego battle. Day. Yeah. And I literally used the word ego. You did. Multiple times. Ooh, we should have a segment called ego. Mm. Okay, Paul. I think it's time for not the news. News. Woo. This might be one of my favorite things that's come up in a while. This douchey guy. <laughs> Basically, anyone who rides a Porsche is totally... Really? Crazy. And why is that? Like, if you're going to get a muscle car, get, like, a Mustang. Don't get a Porsche. Okay. Okay, I respect Unless you live respect in the it. country. Where it's, like, come on. A Porsche, you just look like an idiot. And so this guy decided to... Of course, it took place in Florida. His, Ryan, uh-huh. his name's Ryan Doolittle, which is hilarious. Okay, if your name's Doolittle, you're going to get into some Doolittle shenanigans. I'll tell you that. So he was drunk and decided to test drive uh, Porsche mm-hmm. at a dealer, which surprisingly they let him drive anyway, considering he's, you know, drunk. Yeah. And he crashed the car into 11 other Porsches. What? During his, his drive, he smashed through a metal gate Actively destroying multiple vehicles which are owned by Porsche as well as vehicles personally owned by some private orders owners. Uh-huh. He caused one hundred thousand dollars in damage. Jesus. How do you even recover from that? He ended up with simply one DUI. <laughs> After he it got, probably felt so bad for him. It's he got a DUI with property damage. Oh oh by the way, when mm-hmm. they took him to the hospital, he assaulted a nurse. So he also Jesus got Christ. Trouble for assaulting a nurse. Kids, this is why you don't do drugs. <laughs> I mean, in this case, he drank, he but drank. still. like. So not only did he do $100,000 worth of damage on a car, he then beat up a nurse. Oh, my gosh. Don't She's probably like, oh, it's time to get you sober. No! <laughs> don't beat up nurses. I want to be sober. <laughs> uh, that's not the news news. Wait, what? That's it. That's it today? You want another one? Yeah, oh, my God. Keep them coming. Give me, give me another two. Wait, oh, stand by. Paul's like, Paul's like, oh shit! Like I wasn't, I, I thought there was. Like I a, thought we were just doing one. That's okay. Paul. No, we got t- we got time for two. Keep talking. I got to go find some. Stuff. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, new Backstreet Boys came out. I don't know if people heard that. It's, so it sounded like Maroon Five. Oh, it was well, you know, I like the chorus, but like the verses are so like slow compared to the chorus. So I wish the chorus, like the chorus, I'm bopping. I'm like, oh, ah, but then like when you get to the verse and you're just like, you just okay, <laughs> okay. I love how uh, they say their name at the beginning. I kind of like the new um, Christina Aguilera and Demi Lovato song. It kind of sounds like a burlesque cut. Like mm-hmm. it, it was like they went back to burlesque, you know, when she did that movie with Cher. Right. Kind of reminds me of that. All right, you ready for this? I am ready. Yeah, news, news. 
So we, uh, last episode we talked about stalker briefly, and Paul's been on. We did. We did. So this lady is a legitimate stalker, legitimately, legitimately a stalker. She's a Phoenix woman and is facing <gasps> numerous charges. Yes. After she sent one of her exes sixty-five thousand texts. How messages. do you even do that? Okay, seriously. So, How do you even do that? Like, so hold on. Let's just say thirty days. Okay, okay. thirty days. Thirty. Uh, so sixty-five thousand. We'll give her a month to do this. <laughs> That's twenty one hundred texts a day. Jesus. So if you divide that by twenty four, she was sending approximately ninety texts an hour. Like I want to know for twenty four straight hours. For well, a wait, well, what was the time period? Was it a month? Was it a week? Let me look. I also want to know what was the quality of text. Were they just like hey, 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 hey? It had to have been something like that. Or were they, or were they literally just like these essay descriptions, like? Like, well, I really want you. Come the, back to me, please. Like, I, I need you in my life. The, some of the texts were longer than just, hey. Yeah. Some of them were, I hope you die, you rotten, filthy Jew. Whoa! And one was, I, oh, what I would do with your blood. I want to bathe in it. Okay. And so, yeah. Definitely a and little so, stalkerish there. He claims that he was never worried about her. I would be. Okay. And she said, when they asked her why she did this, she claimed simply, love is an excessive thing. <laughs> That's like when you go to like the buffet. Look and at they... this woman. Have you seen this woman? Yeah, just her eyes, dude. Her, when she like, she has those wide, crazy she's, eyes. Like she's normally like a relatively normal looking woman, yeah. except until you hit the eyes. Yeah. Then she's got those crazy I love that she said love is an excessive thing. It's like me going to the buffet and clearing them out of food. They go, why did you do this? Like love like, is an excessive like, thing. <laughs> like, Hunger is just what it is, dude. Like, it's just hunger. And they're like, get out. She was sending an average of 500 text messages a day. How do you do that, though? I don't I don't even know. How, like, okay, so 500 a day. How long would it take you to hit 65,000? I feel like I only send maybe, like, 100 or 200 a day, and that's, like, great. That's a very gracious sentiment. If you sent five... That doesn't even make sense, because if you sent 500 a day for 30 days, that's only 15,000. So was this going this on had long? To, this had to have been over. A, a, which why would he let it go that long? You know? I, you know, well, he said he wasn't scared of her, so he probably was like, eh, whatever. Or maybe he enjoyed the intention. Well, I wouldn't. I would. I would have enjoyed attention, but like the part where she's like, "I want to bathe in your blood," like I would have been like, "Ooh, the attention meter has been filled. Thank you for coming." She also allegedly broke into the man's home and took a, a bath in his tub. Police That's say, like some like movie shit right police there. Police <laughs> say she also showed up at his work pretending to be his wife. Wow. And finally, when they told her that she had sent approximately sixty five thousand texts, her response is, her response was honestly, I thought I'd send more. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's savage. That's like when someone goes, so we noticed that you stole 10 diamonds, and they're like, actually, it was 12. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> we'll wow, add those two charges. The, the one, like, dang. It's the eyes. You can tell from the eyes. Like, I'm not even trying to be that guy, but you can literally look in someone's eyes, and you can oh, tell, you can. like, 100%. are they crazy, psycho, or insane? Because I have a theory, Paul. Or high. And bay with, base with me. So crazy. Crazy's like me. Like, I'm kind of crazy, right? Like, I'm a little fun, like, you know... If you were to, like, kind of, like, hurt me in a relationship, I might, like, say some things, be, like, a little honest with you and be like, you know, you're a jackass or whatever. And then there's Psycho. And Psycho is one of those things where it's, like, they're probably not like that all the time, but, like, in that one instance, they were Psycho. Like, they they keyed someone's car. Right, right, or, like, right. they egged your house. Like, they might not be doing that all the time, but it was, like, a Psycho move. That is insane. To send 65,000 texts like that. 500 texts a day saying, I want to kill you and I want to bathe in your blood. Man. That's insane. I just want to know at what point he's like, eh, maybe I should call someone about this. <laughs> like when I got get a call, <laughs> once I hit probably a hundred, I'd be like, it's getting a little weird. The point when she said, "I like, why didn't we'll we just block your, her number?" Yeah, I was gonna say you can block her number. Too. Like that was like, I, it's I, I don't want to blame this guy here because you know I, he in a way is a victim. But like, what were you like? What was going through your mind when you were like, nah, I'll just keep like getting these texts from her. Like, oh, this is fun. Like, I think he enjoyed it. I think in some level he enjoyed it. Honestly, I think so too. Because it, it went till sixty five thousand texts. I think the, probably the point when he put put her in, when she broke into his house, take a bath. That's when he got. Or that's when, probably when he said, "Okay, that's." Or enough. showing up at his at his work, pretending to be his wife. Yeah. That's you just like imagine coming home and like your stock is just in the bathtub like mm, can you pass the Maybelline <laughs> <laughs> and you're like no get the fuck out <laughs> bitch I use bar soap wait do you really use bars of soap hell yeah I use bar soap oh my god are you did you ever get sentenced to prison and then like you just got a culture to that yes 
Because millennials, <laughs> millennials are killing bars of soap, and I'm what glad. What do you mean killing bars of soap? We don't buy bars of soap as I do. Well, yeah, you're like the millennial who does, but. What's, how do you know this? I, I'm a sociologist, Paul. This has been. Uh, What's the big deal with buying bars of soap? It's just they're not, they're totally filthy. How are they filthy? Okay, so you take that bar of soap, and I'm going to get a little descriptive for you, because I really want you to think about this. You shove that bar of soap down your poop-filled crevice of an I asshole. I don't shove it up my ass crack. Well, it, it's in the area. And then you wreck your pubes with it, and then you slide it along your little pork chop titties, <laughs> and then you wash your face with it. We go gotta go face down. You don't do you don't do ass. Okay, but here's up. the thing: even if you did face down, yeah, that's like wiping front to back. <laughs> back to okay, but even if you did face down, the next time you use that bar of soap, you start on your face, but it's been on your ass, dude. I. <laughs> That's why I, you use like liquid soap. I or have, you use the, I have been doing the this. gel, the shower I, gel. Bitches use shower gel. I have. <laughs> well, then I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I have used bars of soap for literally my entire life, and this guy never even had acne once. I'm I'm gonna Google this right now to show you bars of soap. I don't care what you, what you Un, Oh, the first thing, unhygienic. <laughs> it's literally the question. Soap. Are bars of soap covered in germs? The answer, germs can and most likely do live in all bars of soap, because, but it's they very unlikely that they will make make you sick or cause a skin infection. But it's still gross. Jeez, who cares? So is a lot of things we do. Like what? Literally name something. Wiping your ass is gross. You do that. Yeah, but then you wash your hands. Yeah, I'm it's not like I my like, face. Yeah, with a bar of soap that you use to wash your ass. Who cares? It's just like, I don't know. My booty's I, not that dirty, man. I don't know. I don't know. I've seen you eat like some stuff before, and it's like that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like Paul will be like, I'll take like some chicken wings, a quesadilla. And some what have I ever dip. ordered that around you? Ever? I'm just saying, when you eat like that, it's just gonna it's gonna be violent down there a little bit. That's why you just you. you it's a lot of Americana food, just like you keep things to... spread and let it go. I mean, honestly. yeah. Then you like clean up your poop cheeks with your soap bar that you use on your face, like. <laughs> I just think it's disgusting. I don't care. I, I think do it's not care so disgusting. <laughs> You're like I'm so shook that he was. I am because I'm just like, ew, jeez. Like I can't help but be like a little judgmental. <laughs> I like how like sometimes I'll like I'll like talk. I'll be on like my first dates. So, like yeah, I'm like so low maintenance. I'm like so not judgmental. And here I am like Paul. I'm like condemning you. <laughs> like, <laughs> Crazy bar of soap. <laughs> yeah, but bar of soaps like they're probably gonna. I don't. Know, I wouldn't say they're gonna go extinct, but I think they're gonna be on the decline. I think they're gonna stop making as many. Like you know, like they'll have like. Some available. Whatever, I'll still use them. I'm gonna go buy all the all the uh, dove. We're I gonna can. be we're gonna be in the senior home, and like you're gonna be like, oh, what they a great still day advertise for a so fun and like bars of soap. Do they do? Yes. Well, it's different if it's like a hand bar of soap. What What are you talking about? No, in the shower. They yeah, show that's using... wrong. It's wrong. It's just I mean, so are a lot of things in this country. <laughs> we'll save that for another uh, debacle. But anyway. And real quick, uh, our Cleveland hotspot. So we visited Corky's, which is like a young. Woo. He's like a rabbit just now. Oh man, honestly, you're gonna need some rabbit powder. <sighs> so Corky's is in Lakewood. It is a karaoke bar meets a video game bar meets like a gay bar meets like a local bar meets. Like, it, it was really honestly, it was the, like I like karaoke. I do. Yeah. But nobody sang a karaoke song except for like one. Like the, the guy sang Temptations. That's a karaoke song. Yeah. It's a great. But when people are singing um, System of a Down, <laughs> like that's not working. It was some like Metallica. When people are singing Metallica, that's not working. When people, that, you met this guy with a cane gets up there. Yeah. And starts singing Long, Long Bean Jim or whatever. Like some weird ass folk song. Yeah. There's that old couple too that sang that like country song from like the 1930s. Yeah, I'm like, how like, the hell? Mama, the Great Depression hit the house and everything's going it's down. It's like what karaoke person has that in their thing? It's yeah. like, yeah, I want this bluegrass song from the 30s. Like, yeah. got you, fam. Like occasionally, so one karaoke song I'll do that's not really a karaoke song, but I'll do it is Hotel California. You know? That's a good one though. Because at least people know it. It's not really a good yeah. like karaoke song. No, classic but, rock songs are good yeah. karaoke songs. But like it was to quote Paul, it was very angsty. You had a lot of people going up there. They're like, "Death and blood." There's a lot of kill my skin apart, and like it's like it's not like a bar where you'd expect that. No. It was a very happy as bar. Mag- as we're playing a, a you Super know, Mario. A, no, not even a Super Mario, like a bootleg version. Bootleg of Super Mario. Mario. <laughs> but like 
it's just there was so much angst in yeah. that room and it was good there was a lot of people there it was fun yeah. but there's just so much angst in that yeah. and everything everybody's saying and yeah, it was especially really the one angsty. guy did screamo I'm like, this karaoke <laughs> well, and I'm just like what I mean the bad thing is he sang it really well because yeah. I know what song he's singing and he did it well, but it's like, dude, who karaoke screamo? Like, yeah, that's it was, a thing. It was heavy. Our one friend did that. Um, oh, I forget the name of the song, but it's like, I will swallow your pride. I will choke on the ride. Na, 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 na. I lo- that was a good karaoke song. Who did that one? Spano. Oh, yeah. Turn it inside out. Find nothing but. That was, see, that one was a good one, too. But yeah, it was a lot of angst. But the drinks were cheap. It was like five bucks for a vodka cranberry. Not too bad. I know. I'm like, you know me. I'm the vodka cranberry connoisseur of Cleveland. Ooh. Oh, I love those. Vo- I'm. I'm a whiskey sour guy. I actually converted from vodka cranberry to whiskey oh, wow. sour. You know what I was thinking of doing, actually? And this would be a good one to do. I was thinking of creating, like, a social business card. So when I meet people out who are like, let's connect. I'm like, you know, here's a social business card. And I'll have, like, my Twitter, Instagram. Isn't that, like, pretentious? I think it'd be cute. I don't know. I mean, if it's made pretentiously, it could be pretentious. But be, like, <laughs> a whole, like, a fun way to meet new people. You just slide it out of your breast pocket. <laughs> like, right, like, like, I'm like... Look, like digging through my tits real quick like oh here it is and I pull out of your front pocket like, oh. <laughs> it could, you know it could be like a thin business card like take business cards and cut them in half in like a thin strip so like a fortune cookie <gasps> thing yeah there you go except like hard like a hard stock a hard stock fortune cookie yeah well, I think that was a, it was a fun place though. It was unique. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, I'm burping all over the place. Ooh, I'm tired all of a sudden. Paul, what are your afterthoughts of? I don't got any. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's like no thoughts here. Honestly, I'm just that, that. I think what threw me off a lot is that that horoscope thing, man. Yeah. Some of those are like, I don't know if I necessarily believe it, mm-hmm. like that stuff. But sometimes they're like, I don't understand it's so vague. A lot of that stuff is vague, but sometimes yeah. it hits home. Well, you know, I, I always tell people, because, you know, you have people who are like, oh my god, astrology is everything. Like, I'm, not saying, people who bull- are I'm like, not saying it's bullshit, but yeah. I'm saying, like, I just don't know how much stock I take into it. Well, I think it's a good frame of reference to be like, like, just think about where you are in life. Because I think, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm really pretty good at this, and you're pretty good at this, too, where you can kind of, like, um, like, you can question, like, okay, what am I doing in life, and how am I doing things? And I think astrology is a good way to, like, kind of question, like, you know, when it said... You know, oh, look out for this. And you're like, did that happen to me this week? Or how did I feel this week? It's a good emotional intelligence tool. Right, 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 right. Sorry, I'm boring Paul to death. Oh, man. I don't know what happened. I got that two... You know how they say that 2.30 feeling? Yeah. It's 2.30. It is 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a great second episode of our three-part season finale. And I cannot wait until the season finale, Paul. Oh, I know. We got a lot. I think I'm going to get some legal fireworks and shoot them off in your backyard. <laughs> what are legal snakes? Those little snakes and those little sparkler things? Can you just imagine me in your backyard with sparklers? Like, ah! <laughs> by yourself. No, I'm not even home. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just said, you like a sandwich me in your backyard. And you're like... What? He's like doing the slow mo picture so you can spell out love with like the sparklers. Season three, ultimate hour long episode in mm-hmm. sparklers. Well, until then, I, I think don't want to have a special guest too. We might, we might, maybe we could get two. We got a week to to get this ready. Get an audio studio be... audience have canned laughter. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'd love to add some canned laughter. It could be live. We could do a live, <laughs> live from. <laughs> You Paul's know what I'm going to do this year, by the way? I know we're kind of ending things. Yeah. This year I have coming up. It's going to be a great thing in my house. Porchella. Oh. It's going to be awesome. What is that happening? When, whenever I finish my porch, which is soon, but it's oh going to be Porchella. What are we going to do? What's the... Can I perform? You'll I'll perform see. live. You can perform. Reap Star live at Porchella. Yeah. You're going to... Can I make a poster? Here, I want to make can, a... You can be the headline. I want to be a... Yeah. I'll make a pro- poster. It'll be like me with like... You know, music with Greta Dean falling on my face. <laughs> and it'll be like, Reapstar live at Porcella. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. We'll Put hang up my... over on town. <laughs> have like five people show up. <laughs> Put on my Instagram. Like, hey, babe, see you live. What if like 300 people show up in my backyard? <laughs> what if it, oh my God, it was like, you know, remember that story of like the guy who was like doing this Airbnb and they have a party? It was like, what, in Brook Park or uh, Braxville? Oh, Solon. Solon. Yeah. Well, anyway, until next week, au revoir. Cheers. Peace out.